Okay, now we've got dimensions, happy dimensions everywhere. Um, the last thing we're going to do on the plans is notes and uh, room labels. So room labels are pretty simple. They are over here, uh, right there, the zone tool is what it's also known as. In the zone tool we can uh, draw little lines or we can uh, do it to the inner edge of the wall. So if we turn off the upper floor there, like that, and you do this construction method like this to the inner wall, you can usually just, oh, it's saying it's not fun. So let, let's just do it the, this way. We'll do this with the box. Uh, you can make a box. Sometimes it works the other way and it's really fancy. Um, and then we've got, so i got to adjust this, right? So this is the garage. I can come up here and name it the garage. Use all caps. And I'll number that 101. And then the other thing I'm going to do is turn off the area. I don't really need the area on these rooms. So I'm going to go in here. But one thing you can do is I, I usually put area on there initially in schematics so that clients can see the, the sizes of rooms. So if you go over to the order where it says measured area and just put none. And then we've just got that. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to alt-click it so I've got it as a, a thing. So like Aaron Sorkin sometimes. Uh, and then I'm going to label the other rooms. Put one there. I usually try to align the labels themselves. What's going on here? So I might come over here and control click this and go to the center so I can just move the label and align it with the other label. Revit's a little better at lining these up. But here you can see that we've got, you know, these numbers aren't quite right. So this is 102, and let's see, we've got to figure out what, the, what they're actually called. Did I actually flip the house again the wrong way? Look at that. How did I do that? Anyway, mudroom, no, wait, where am I? Mudroom, bathroom, entry. Put that there. Bath. And this I need to name 103. And this is Mud Room 104. I'm going to solve my little wall problem here. I don't know how this happened, but. happening on Mr. Computer. Okay. Uh, then I got to do kitchen. Here you can see if I don't um, select the, the last one, it will actually update the number for me. So if I just call this dining. So now the next one's 106, so this one's still 105. It doesn't really help me at this point, but you'll see in the future how it'll help. So there you go, there are room labels for each of the rooms on the main level. So that's all done. Uh, and that's it, we're done with the main level plan. That is our architectural plan. Over here we have all of our notes, general notes and construction notes, those are already set up. Um, everything else is ready to roll. 
looks like I have a little inconsistent on my dimensions. I think what I'm going to do is, even though this little feature is cool, I'm going to turn it off. And just make sure that all the work is done here. As a lot of you discovered with windows and doors that they're not totally consistent in the way that they have that uh, window schedule, which is why I don't do window schedules. Uh, I think it's better to just kind of have it right there so you can do that, that business. So that's that. Plans are done. Next thing I want to do are building sections. So some of you have got these little guys over here, these little uh, building section markers. I think they uh, by default are up like this. So we're going to do, uh, and these are already placed on sheets, so we're going to do these in spots that make sense. So this guy, this first one, what you should do is select it, control D, and move it down to where it cuts through the stairs. We want to make sure that we have a section through the stairs, so right about there. And then this guy, control D, and drag it sideways until it cuts through another logical spot. And I think we're this little bump out is makes a lot of sense. It may also make sense to cut through here where the two slabs are different. Um, I think I think let's do it here. Let's do it through here so that we have um, I'm gonna do it right here so we actually have the we don't cut through the stairs but we cut through a door and a couple of windows something like that. So then with this guy select I can right click and open the section and there's my section. still have that crazy post. So you can see what's happening in sections is it is still alive. It's still the model. These are still all the model elements, uh, which is a very nice thing to have. Um, and we can see how some of these things merge together nicely. Some of them don't. Uh, you can see the slab is going on there. It's doing its thing. All those things are happening. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up all of my text boxes for what I know they need to be. So we don't have any, we, do we have a flat roof anywhere? We have over that um, little bump out, don't we? So let's leave that in there, keep that as it is. Uh, our typical roof construction is, uh, I call it a finished roofing material because I do a separate finish schedule. So I don't call that out as shingles, so we can just leave that. Exterior wall, uh, we might want to update that to be, uh, well, we have it drawn as two by six studs. We know that it's two two by two, two by four uh, staggered stud wall construction. If any of you want to go ahead and do that, you can do that in the model and in the, uh, the notes here. Um, we've got 16 inch floor trusses. That's probably how our, actually we're going to do a poured concrete, aren't we? Uh, let's see. So let's call this out. So we can go to our text tool. If you shift click on the box of text and then click somewhere in it, then you can start editing it. So if I go in here, I can make this inch poured concrete, two by four studs, three and a half inch polystyrene insulation and a half inch chip. That's about what we're doing on there. Slap looks good. Decking looks good. Uh, let's get rid of this stuff. I think with a, uh, we'll have to look at how exactly how Eric uh, built those, but I'm pretty sure it's an engineered roof truss. Engineered roof trusses. And then um, soffit plywood. Let's just call it that. And then you got to line these up. Make sure that looks good. There's no porch wall construction. We can get rid of that. That all looks pretty good, though. Pretty rare that all that works out like that. Control D. I'm just going to drag these so that they're centered on the actual drawing like this. And then over here, I'm going to start moving these guys. So the rooftop or ridge, um, what I would do is press Alt-G to make sure that you are hitting the whole thing here and then drag this up so that it lines with the very top like that. We don't have a third level top of subfloor so we can actually what I think I'm going to do is delete this. Drag this up 
to there. And then I'll just update that text. And here, the top of plate, I believe it's, it's supposed to be a yellow, one eighth. Yeah, well, let's, let's, uh, we got to get the second floor of the right spot anyway, but, um, this will drag up to here. This will drag up to the top of that window. And this will drag up to the top of the floor, to the bottom of the floor, window. Main level subfloor should be already in the right spot. Um, and then here, I'm going to drag this up to like that. Oops, not a copy. And then drag this down to the top of that slab in the basement. Uh, and then I think what I'm going to do is take my dimension string and just do another. dimension that calls out you know the depth to the um, to that garage wall and there's my section so I, I gotta update this text don't I alt G again click on this little pick that text click on it Um, roof, top of ridge. That just gives the city a sense of where the highest point of the building is so that when they look at the drawings they can do that. Um, so that's my building section. I'm going to show you how to detach this in the next model and start doing some drafting. And I'll come back.